Good evening, my friends. This is Paul, and this is something that I've wanted to do for quite a long time, but I didn't get around to it for mainly two reasons. One was because there were other things I, ra I would rather talk about. You know, my name is, well, YouTube name. Somehow people forget that my actual name is Paul. YouTube name is The Catholic Nintendo Nerd. Doesn't that imply that I'd want to talk about Catholicism and video games? But because it's YouTube and not MeTube, I like to please my subscribers as well. And I learned during my most recent live streams that most of the people that subscribe to me do so because of my Myers-Briggs content. I have no idea where that came from, but I am going to oblige. So I copied and pasted the lyrics of Greg McLeod's ISTJ, The Inevitable Letdown, which is available on MPLP, whatever that means, and also on YouTube. He has a music video, so just look up his channel and type in ISTJ, The Inevitable Letdown. That's Greg McLeod. And he doesn't claim to be an expert on Myers-Briggs, but me being an ISTJ myself, I've listened to the song several times, and boy, does it fit really, really well. Now, a quick disclaimer is if I say the word he in this song, I'm referring to the ISTJ that's giving the monologue in the song. I would highly recommend that you actually listen to the song before you watch this, but just in case, I'm going to tell you the lyrics anyway. So, um, The other thing is that the song is mostly written from the perspective of an ISTJ that is under stress. This isn't necessarily what we're thinking all the time, and if it is, it's usually what's in our minds, but we're not going to tell you unless we really, really, really trust you. Like if you're a girlfriend, sister, brother, that kind of stuff. Um, so he starts out by saying, I'm not bad with goodbyes. I'm bad with whys that don't get answered. Like, why did you call me before you canceled? He has a couple of other questions, but just to pause here. He's basically saying that he can't stand other types that don't explain themselves because ISTJs are very thorough people. They want to be concise. They want to be easily understandable. And the average person isn't, at least in my experience. Most of the people I encounter are intuitives and they, they don't really give a straight answer for like anything. Usually I have to force it out of them, especially why did you call me? before you canceled, like ISTJs hate, hate, hate cancellations. And it's like, oftentimes intuitives don't explain themselves very well. I get if there's an emergency, but tell us, come on, give us something to work with people. We have inferior intuition. We can't fill in the blanks like you can. <sighs> then the second thing he says is, why would you choose your roommate's bed? Why did I ever trust a single thing you said? I censored that a little bit, but that's the gist of it. Um, the roommate's bed is referring to the fact that he is likely, he's likely not very impressed by the fact that he is likely trying to flirt. Well, I guess it could be a she as well. There are female ISTJs. Um, he or she, I'm going to say he because that's easier, he is probably jealous of the fact that he's trying to woo on this girl, and yet this girl seems to take more interest in her own roommate than in him. So he's probably thinking, well, I wonder if she's secretly lesbian. And then he's wondering, does she even like me at all? Because the next line is, why did I ever trust a single thing you said? People, non-ISTJs are really pathetic at making promises that they can't keep. So he's probably suggesting that it was all a lie and that she, you know, can't say a single true thing in her life. So next he says, it was all in my head. You never shared it. And now I'm less mad than I'm embarrassed. So he's saying that all this stuff is what he's imagining. He's hoping that what he's perceiving is a lie. He wants to know the objective truth, but he's embarrassed because it turns out that all of his worst fears were actually a reality. And because ISTJs don't like speculating possibilities, now he's like super, I guess, offended is the best word I can think of because he's just like, oh my gosh, I never thought you could be that rude and inconsiderate. And yet it turns out 
that you are. He next says, you should take a chance. Sometimes you're scared of. I knew it advance. I had it all taken care of. I'm careful. I don't know why that's in there. That doesn't really flow. But the thing is, he's wondering why she's not giving him the benefit of the doubt. In fact, he could be saying that about any of his friends. But he planned that in advance because ISTJs are planners. We like to know what's coming up. So he basically had this backup plan that he knew they would desert him. And so the bridge is now I'm sleeping in, giving in, making up for the lost time. He's basically letting himself be emotional in private. Notice how he says he's sleeping in. Typically, you don't sleep when you're with your friends. So he's, you know, going to go cry when most ISTJs don't like crying in public. So then the refrain, which is rather simple when I copy and paste it, it's just, oh, whoa, it's the inevitable letdown. You tell me you're in, then you pull out again, again, with the lack of commitment that ISTJs hate. So he's basically just saying that the average person is going to be terrible and he might as well just accept it because they're just not going to keep their promises. So next up, he says, backups of backups of backups are getting my back up on my back flailing, flailing fail safes. So he's basically saying that no matter what plan he keeps, he keeps making, no matter how much he tries to improve himself, how he might say, okay, maybe I should develop my feeling more. Maybe I should say this less rudely. And they still don't like him. So he's just getting upset that all of these backup plans are epically failing him. I don't feel safe in this dark place alone. It's sick and twisted. He's saying that he's actually in, because he's in the grip of his inferior function, he's going to be relying on extroverted intuition. Extroverted, meaning, give me people, give me people, talk me out of this, people. It's sick and twisted. Everything that could ever go wrong is how I live it. So basically, again, when an ISTJ is in their inferior function, they overimagine every possible wrong scenario and then they blame it as though it's totally themselves. This next paragraph is just basically him basically screaming. Walls in, pitfalls, balls of rock hard granite. If they've got it, I thought about it. Basically, he's just like really, really in pain saying that you guys are just like hurting me to death. But yet I thought about it. I knew it because in the past, you guys have let me down so much. Oh, I forgot to do the next line. He said, and probably half planned it. Yeah, because we don't really forget our past that easily. You screw us over once and that messes us up for life. Like we are never, ever, ever going to like regain that trust ever. So you better know what you're dealing with when you get into a relationship with an ISTJ. Then he said, two footed the landing till the landing turned into lava. So now he's saying that, again, his plan failed, even though he took extra care to get to that point, but yet the circumstances happened, and now he's really burned. So now he wants to talk about it in this next line. The volcano needs a virgin, and I don't have one. That really creeped my friends out, because they, for once, were the literal thinkers, and they were intuitives, mind you. They're like, a volcano needs a virgin? What the heck does that mean? Well, because I've been in the grip of my inferior function many times, I can attest that it means that he needs someone to talk to. He needs someone to talk him out of this fantasy. He needs to be able to constructively express his emotions so that he doesn't go mad. But no one wants to hear it because they expect the ISTJ to be all tough and they think that we don't have emotions and they think that we don't have things that are bothering us. So they're just like, well, screw you. I don't care about your emotions. I don't care about your feelings. That may not be what people are actually saying, but it's typically the impression that people give off when we do share our feelings. So that's why we don't. So he continues in repeating the refrain or the bridge saying, I'm sleeping in, giving in, making up for the lost time saying, what a waste of time. Why should I ever trust people in the first place? Um, here's like the second bridge. He says, I'm living it. She's giving in instead of giving it, giving it a try. So that's basically his lament saying that she's succumbed to peer pressure and her own emotions. And he wishes that he would 
or he wishes that she would um, actually give him a chance to prove himself. I guess I can officially prove that he is talking about a girl that he likes because it says she's giving in. Uh, and seeing as the guy that wrote this is a dude, we can rule out the fact that it's a girl talking because he very clearly was talking in a manly voice. And then he ends the song by saying, it's the inevitable letdown. You tell me you're in, then you pull out again. So basically, he's just completely lost faith in humanity. He's just like, okay, screw you all. You guys don't know how to keep your promises. You guys don't know how to respect me. You guys never keep your word. You're unhonest. Un you don't have integrity. You don't have dedication. I'm done with you. I'm done. You're, you're all just a bunch of idiots. Anyway. That's the song, and I can attest to feeling every single one of those things, and often still do, when I'm in the grip of my inferior function. So if you're listening to this and think that this is rather harsh, if you have an ISTJ in your life, and it doesn't matter if they're wife, husband, significant other, friend, whatever it is, if you have someone that you care about in your life that's an ISTJ, this is probably what it's going through their head when they're stressed out or upset. And I think this is a lot easier for the feeling types to do, but I think it would be nice if you every now and then gently, very gently, asked the ISTJ, is there anything you want to talk about? Don't phrase it as, how are you feeling? Because their literal thinking is going to say, well, I am feeling skin on my fingers right now. Or I am feeling as though I need a haircut. You, you need to be more specific. If you say, is there anything you want to talk about, then their literal mind is going to say, talk about. Yes, there is something I would like to verbally express to you. That That's that's at least what I prefer. I mean, I really do not like being asked, how are you? Because it's such an open-ended question. Like, it could mean so many things. The other thing is don't degrade an ISTJ's emotions. Um, when they choose to express it, it's typically their way of saying that they trust you, like, a lot. Like, really a lot. Because they don't open up to just anyone. Especially not me. So if the ISTJ is not open with you, likely it's because you haven't proven yourself to be the exception. Likely you're just fitting in with all of these failures in life. And I would highly recommend that you look up what generalized ISTJ failure is. Because, yeah, I mean, ISTJs can sometimes be a little bit hard to deal with, but that's not fair to say that they should be the only ones having to change. I mean, usually there's this mantra of, oh, the thinking types are just so mean, they should change. No, you feelers got to do your work too. And one of those works is <laughs> you got to be willing to show the ISTJ some respect. Everyone deserves respect, whether they're a thinker or a feeler. Thinkers just do a more pathetic job of expressing it. That said, I'm not really sure much else that I can say because this is someone else's song and not mine, but I do hope you will look it up for yourself. The background lyrics or the background movement is so fitting to the ISTJ's life of structure, and I don't want to spoil it because if I do, then maybe you won't watch it. And I'm trying to market something that's free here, so give me some slack. ICJs are terrible at marketing. And anyway, I apologize for this video being too choppy. I'm thinking it's probably Movie Maker's fault, because I'm using my computer's webcam, and I know that that's not the problem, so... <sighs> Wish me luck for going to Best Buy sometime when I'm trying to save money, but oh well, because world... Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Keep me updated if there's anything else Myers-Briggs related. Heck, make it something video games or Catholic. I'd prefer to do that. But if you really want Myers-Briggs stuff, I'd be glad to oblige. I do love teaching. And if I can inform people how to communicate, cool. With that said, have a great night. Keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye.